seen you for 10, 15 years. You just totally disappeared. I'm not surprised as an actor you want to be a part of this because there's so much heart and respect, isn't there, in this in this story? Yeah, it, and it all comes from, you know, um, Jake's got a, a big, big heart and he's a compassionate man and it's lovely to, to see and, and, and it was lovely to be part of and stuff. I mean, watching your performance as well, but you always bring so much truth to, to every part that you play, but... I wondered if you based him on anybody that you knew, not necessarily homeless, because you just felt you really did know who this person was. Well, I knew, I knew him, but it's not based on anybody. <laughs> no, 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 no. I knew his soul. I knew where, I knew where the guy was coming from, and he's a, he's a gentle soul, and he's, 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 he's running away, and he doesn't know, he doesn't even know any longer what he's running away from, you know. The, the one thing that as well that. that I found very respectful about the, the way you portrayed him was that the, the amount of self-respect this man had. He, he was clean. It's he, just the circumstances that he was in. I think it's very important, isn't it, to put that message across? Oh, definitely. And again, that's all Jake. That was all in the script that he was. He would look after his own personal hygiene, and he, and it's not a vanity thing. Um, it, it's it's just it's a respect, a self-respect kind of thing. Definitely. It's very much a family story. This, isn't it, mm. as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He. he, he like all of us, you know, he, he's, he, there are family fallouts and you lose touch. And then in his own particular circumstances, resulted in his basically being away for 15 years and them assuming the worst, which they, they had every right to do. And again, it, you know, from a family point of view, what I like about it is there's an element of it's never too late, which is lovely because there's fallouts in every family and some go on way longer than they should have done. So it's, it's nice that, to suggest that, you know, it can be resolved. Acceptance is a strong theme throughout. The yeah, it is all the way through a film. Yeah. The, the, the wonderful thing as well is just the, the, the flow of the dialogue. It just feels oh, yeah. so natural. It, was that ad-libbed or was it all off the page? Uh, no, we ad-libbed quite a bit. We ad-libbed, but it was always, it was always with, with total respect for the script. But uh, there was a fair bit of ad-libbing would go on. Yeah. Is yeah. there anything that you've learned about the human condition yourself by being a part of this yeah. film? Yeah, because I mean, like, we we all got on so well doing it, and and again, you know, there was one night I remember I was lying there, and it was it was cold, and we were, you know, doing all the various takes, and I was lying in the street in Liverpool, and you became very aware between takes, like just around the corner in this alleyway, there were two people who were really <laughs> living the nightmare, you know, and. And that was something that really, it was a reminder that you're just a Ponzi actor, you know, and they're actually, you know, you, you get nice people coming up with jackets and food and all that, whereas the people around the corner didn't have any of that. It's very grand. Yeah, yeah. So where have you been all this time? Motorways, shelters, buses, whatever. Watching the film, it feels very much like a pilgrimage. Um, what was the kind of genesis of the film for you? Well, the idea came to me when I was uh, doing some volunteering. I was, did some shifts for Christ at Christmas a few years ago and met some extraordinary people with um, amazing stories. And one of the people I was kind of helping out during, during one of the days was uh, a Scotsman who travelled from Scotland down the motorways uh, to, 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 to come to the, the shelter. And he did it each year. And afterwards, I kind of realized that that journey, I mean, he told me it was an extraordinary journey. It was actually uh, much longer than Hector's own journey uh, and probably more difficult. Um, I realized that th the journey was a great starting point for, for a script. And so using the journey, I then came up with the character and, and the backstory. Because this, it does feel very truthful. And you've got a, a superb actor who really does know his craft and how to bring truth to the big screen with Peter, haven't you? Absolutely, and for a first time to director to get uh, an actor of, of Peter's ability and calibre um, on, on, my, on my first film, and he's in every single scene, was, was, was tremendous. Yeah. The, the dialogue just seemed to flow so naturally um, watching it. W was there ad lib or, or, or did they keep to the page? Strange. I mean, I, I told all my actors they could, as long as they got the meaning across, they could say it however they wanted. But in fact, uh, at the risk of sounding immodest, they, 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 they stuck largely to the, the, the script. Yeah. I mean, there were, Peter came up with one or two little lines which are fantastic, but I mean, for the most part, it was, it was, it was from the script. 
What's interesting as well watching the film is that it, it's set around Christmas time and obviously this is very much a family story as well for, for Peter's character um, and I do think that Christmas is a great time to accentuate the importance of family isn't it really? Yeah, it's, it's strangely, um, that's uh, that's kind of almost accidental. I didn't set out to make uh, a Christmas film, though obviously Christmas is, is, is central to the, the, the story. Uh, but I suppose, I mean, it, it's obviously very much about family because uh, Peter's character, Hector, he has his adopted family, who are the people who work in the shelter and, and go there every year, and then with, there's his real family with whom he's, he's eventually reunited. Spoiler alert. There's some interesting themes as well threaded through it for me, which is forgiveness and acceptance, as well as there's also survival of the fittest in this as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's very true, without giving anything away. <laughs> uh, but it's very much, yes, it's about guilt and, um, you know, suffering and loneliness, and um, but also about, you know, love and, 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 and family and, and generosity and, and charity. It's a place I go to every Christmas. I'll get some friends there. When I watched the film, I saw your character very much as a free spirit, a bit of a rebel raiser. Was he a lot of fun to play? Is that how you saw him? Um, well, I think I spent most of the time asleep. <laughs> I mean, not as me, as the character. I think that's what he did. Uh, no, it was good fun. I mean, unfortunately, there were, I think there were quite a few scenes cut. Um, but it's uh, for precisely the right reasons as well. Um, but yeah, it was good fun. There was a wonderful um, <laughs> choir scene on the steps of the home. I don't know if that ever made the film. Did it? No, I don't think it did. Um, and then there's me and Peter getting locked in a fridge, um, stealing sweets. Uh, that got cut, <laughs> quite rightly so. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but no, it was great. I mean, it was in and out for me, to be honest with you. I think in the business they call it a cough and a spit. Um, but it was, it, was, it was a good thing to do. Well, I think, w for me, watching again the, the, the film, it makes you question um, the choices we make in life. When you see, it, Not everybody's homeless because they've got nowhere to live. Sometimes it is a choice that people do I think make for themselves. be stark raving mad to choose to be homeless in the middle of winter. Um, but I, I, I think I know what you mean. I mean, some people don't like the permanence of a home. In fact, there used to be a guy who used to, we used to call him Outside Dave. He used to sit outside Groucho's. And in fact, I insured him to drive my car. He used to drive me everywhere. Um, but I remember we, we, we petitioned for him to get a house off Westminster Council. He got a flat. <laughs> and we all clubbed together and bought him a paving stone so that he could sit outside his flat on it, which he did. He hated it. He d hated it. Um, he, he, he just couldn't do it. But a lot of people like that. You know, I mean, travellers are travellers, you know, because they can't bear, a lot of the time, the permanence of a home, um, which is absolutely fair. But having said that, I mean, there are an awful lot of people out there um, who have no choice, you know. Uh, and uh, funnily enough, I did a documentary... 80, 35 years ago about Arlington House, which is a homeless homeless hostel in it, Camden. And nothing's changed, you know. Nothing's changed at all, really. And a lot of the people that I interviewed back then in 1980, you, you know, it transpires that they had perfectly good jobs, they had families, children, something had happened, somebody had died, they'd lost their job, they'd had an argument, whatever. And before you know it, you're out there. And I think, I think you have to not have to do anything but I, th I think people should see this film and remember that you know a lot of the time it's not the fault of the people and a lot of the time people should consider these people's situation you know I hold on to nothing now you are everything to me yeah. your normal place save for your shot excuse me can you ask you a favour? Yeah, go ahead. I'm looking for my brother. Peter. Peter McCadam. The wonderful thing.
thing that I see in this film, or one of the many wonderful elements actually, is that the, is camaraderie. Um, but through your character, we see also the, the self-preservation sort of and, and, and survival instincts that have to kick in. Was that something that you saw in your character as well? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think it's got a lot to do with the relationship with um, Dougie, um, played by Laurie Ventry. I think that I never really knew that even relationships like that existed you know it's a, he's he's almost a father figure to her and she really relies on him you know he he we created a whole backstory with jake about um hazel's sort of um family and and the relationships that she had with her father and how she got to the street and and how laurie then became this really important figure in her life. He really took her under her wing and and it does that does exist, that does happen. We I did a lot of research before we started the trailer when I knew we were involved in the project and I, and I've seen that sort of relationship play out and and when when Dougie leaves Hazel it's just absolutely mortifying. But like you said the survivals kick in, all the skills that Dougie had taught her had to start to play out. And I mean it doesn't always happen. I, I, I personally think that Hazel is a strong person and a strong survivor, but I don't. I believe it, it's knocked her. It's really knocked her. And I, well, the, the, the last time that you see Hazel, she's she's battered and bruised, and we sort of give a story of you know that she's tried to find food in the wrong places and things like that. I mean, I, I imagine that's also a, you know a realistic um, situation, but. Hopefully it will be okay for Hazel. We, we, yeah, we ha the thing is we don't, we, we don't really know and that's what's interesting as well, isn't it? Because in life we know, never know. Exactly, there's not always a happy ending and there's not always a full stop to things and I think with Hazel, I mean, I hope and pray with her, her bravery and her, and her being strong that, that she will and I suppose in a way that it's, it's like seeing the reality of it, I, I, you, you walk past people in the street every day, you might stop and have a conversation with them, but you don't know how how things are going to go. They could be speaking about an event, you don't know how that event, well, you know, it's, it's, it's about humanity as Hector and... This story very much is about that, isn't it? And I think what it deals with is, is, is with everybody with such respect as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, hopefully, it's very educational, I believe. Um, and I've definitely learned a lot from it. And it's not always doom and gloom. You know, people connect real, have real relationships and support each other and care about each other on the streets. And, and it's really sort of opened my eyes to that. And I hope it will for everybody else. It does open your eyes and make you think in a different way. And uh, that can only be a good thing. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of writer directors, so for Jake, for this to be his his first film, he, he was very old fashioned. He insisted on meeting me and auditioning me and putting me through me paces, which is fantastic. It's his baby, and he cares very much. And because that comes from the top, it, it passes down to everyone else. We all wanted to do our very best for him, uh, and of course, you you get to work with Peter Mullen at the same time, which uh, I think most most people would would love to work with him and all your dreams will come true if you do he's amazing from what you're saying is this seems like it's a very collaborative process this film everybody was just mucking in together to make the best film possible for each other yeah and I, th I think sometimes that's the beauty of, a, of an independent film that's very low budget you you all you all pull together and you all gun for each other and the, there's no room for egos you you just want to to do the project and with regards to your character, what I saw in him was that he had, he was an angry person, but it came out of a protectiveness. Um, is that how you saw him when you read the part? Yeah, very much. Um, he, his, his wife, the lovely Gina McKee, has presumed that her brother has been dead for over a decade. So when he suddenly turns up, his first thought is for protecting his wife um, and trying to keep her her brother from doing any more damage but then having time to reflect he does encourage them to get together and I won't give away what happens. Did you fall out of your brother? No, I never fell out with him. Fell out with life. Hey! Get off it! What is it with your family? They are my family now, mate. 
the way it is. Do you want a cracker? 